<laughs> you know what? I never would have in a million years if somebody said to me seven or eight years ago, you guys are going to buy a Jeep. And oh, by the way, you're going to love going off-roading. I didn't even know what that meant. And number two, <laughs> you're, you're going to be good at it. You're going to now teach people how to do it. And oh, mm-hmm. wait, we're going to put you on this podcast and you're going to help <laughs> teach more people. I would have said you're out of your mind. So I say to anybody listening, you just never know what door is opening and you just have to step through it. Well, welcome back to another exciting segment of Chick Chat, where myself, Wendy, and Julianne celebrate the perfect fusion of style and adventure. Today, we're diving into a topic that embodies empowerment and exploration, women and Jeeps and the automotive industry. Jeeps have long been synonymous with ruggedness, freedom, and the spirit of adventure. And who says women can embrace all of that and more? So whether you're a seasoned off-road enthusiast or just curious about the world of off-roading, join us as we celebrate the strength, the resilience, and the unstoppable spirit of women who embrace the thrill of this off-road journey. From the countryside to the city streets, more and more women are embracing the Jeep and automotive lifestyle, defying stereotypes and leaving their mark on the off-road community. Are you ready? It's the Jeep Talk Show Chick Chat with your hosts, Julianne and Wendy. Well, Julianne, I'm so excited we get to hear from you about the Toledo Jeep Fest. I know you were out there, so I can't wait to dive in this this episode and find out what happened and what was going on. Oh, man, it was such a blast. Uh, The best part was actually just being in Toledo. It's one of my favorite events to go to and have my vendor booth at. The city is so alive. They love all these companies that come together. They They are just huge fans. The parade is always the biggest, best parade I've ever been in. I mean, we go to all these Christmas parades and everything, but the turnout in Toledo is unbelievable and unmatchable. The kids, the families, the camaraderie, the cheering, just the pure enjoyment and excitement for all these amazing different builds of these Jeeps to come down the road. All the aftermarket industry people have all their customized builds that go down. That's cool. It's amazing. It really is. And just everybody's cheering and they're happy and they're waving and they're just so excited to see (laughs) what other Jeeps are going to come down the road next. You know, who's coming around the next bend? (laughs) Yeah, I was just going to say, so these are not just, this is like everything from a stock Jeep in this parade all the way up to super builds, would you say? Is it like everything in between? Everything, even from some of the first Jeeps that have ever been made. Yeah. So they have refurbished so many of them. They have an entire inside showcase department, CJ7, CJ8, LJs, you name wow. it. They even had some amazing Broncos. Five o'clock garage was there with the Bronco wow. that they got their hands on. And that thing is amazing. <laughs> it's an old school one. And they did such a good job at that build. Wow. That's amazing. I've never been. I see videos. I see all kinds of stuff. In fact, the Jeep Talk Show actually posted a um, ton of pictures. We had a lot of people there. I saw the picture we of everybody did. standing in your booth. They were like, wow, yeah. look at me filled the whole space up. <laughs> we did yeah my whole booth was full of us <laughs> I, yeah it was i love that picture you guys are all smiling and happy it just really shows what a great time you guys had but now this parade how many jeeps are actually in the parade did you, did you get a count do you know how many actually rolled through there that you got to see i did not but i will tell you the parking structure is a massive solar field <laughs> and it's it's literally a parking structure with solar panels on top of it which is oh, super genius right that's the smartest that's parking amazing structure, smartest way right Way to use huh. space, right? Two two different forms of space right. and making it so convenient and good. Um, but the entire thing's full all the way around it and down the street. I mean, like, it's it's packed. Yeah. You can't it's, fit more. <laughs> it, it's. I think it sounds more like a Jeep invasion, right? Isn't that sometimes they'll call it the invasion? Everybody comes yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they so should now, have called it an invasion. <laughs> they should have. So I'm assuming it's not just people from the Toledo area that are doing this. It's people like yourself coming out of town, out of state. Any idea yep. how far you got to meet people or oh, how far they came? Couple. Yeah, there was a couple that was from California. They drove their Jeeps all the way over. They have family that's over here. Yes. Um, they came to the Wrangle Her booth and they were talking about Big Bear. I asked them if they knew you. They knew of 411, but they hadn't personally met you. I don't think okay. it was, but they knew of your... Uh, your events and everything that you do. And they had been talking about being a part of it and whatnot. So I told them you, that they should jump on to chick chat and come and join us. Yes. When we do some of the open ones so that they can do some more Q and A's with you and what you got going on. Yeah, no, that'd be really fun. 
Well, that's amazing. I mean, driving from California to Toledo, that's at least a three-day drive, I think. I mean, I'd have to <laughs> right? look at the map. <laughs> it oh, might it be two. Is. If they drive like me, it's three days, okay? Uh, yeah. Maybe four. <laughs> four. Like, I don't know about that one. So, so, yes. so tell me, so you had a booth set up. Um, mm -hmm. People could come by and check out what you do, correct? Yeah. Talk yeah. to them. Yep. So um, the Jeep was there. I had it on the flex ramp. So um, nice. she was up and up and off the ground, flexed out. <laughs> Lights are all on. Yeah. And we had the vendor booth and we actually launched the Jeep talk show hats. And we I will saw launch those. them. Yeah, they came out. So those came good. out. Great. I hope our guests got to actually see that. If not even on Facebook, it was posted. I love yeah. those hats. They were great. Yeah. I sent some home with some of our team our jeep talk yeah. show team so a couple of them got their own personal uh hats one of some of the first ones that came straight off the embroidery machine <laughs> i love it yeah busy girl you were doing that with the machine because that takes some time with that embroidery stuff it does just a, not too bad though this one actually can do a hat in like two minutes or so so that's pretty it. quick yeah that's no it's nice quick. Yeah, I mean, so once you of, dial it in, it's good. <laughs> out of out of all the people that you that visited your booth, was there any interesting question that came out of it? You know, there's always that happens at events, and sometimes it's out of left field. You get a really strange question. Mostly, they want to know about your Jeep or your build or what you're doing. I'm sure, but was there something that kind of stood out as one of those interesting questions? Yeah, you know, like the one guy had asked me if I uh, if I needed. Uh, my hood for my supercharger and I told them no you know like the supercharger fits under a stock hood and it is yeah. an interesting question but it is. I just put the fancy hood on there just because now it's supercharged and I got the aftermarket muffler on there so she's kind of <laughs> noisy but it's not too it's not obnoxious you know like you can hear yeah. the supercharger the muffler and the tire so everybody plays well so the the volume of all the aftermarket parts that I put on it it sounds good it sounds yeah. like a very good build it doesn't sound like I'm trying to be heard from five miles away. You know <laughs> yeah, I mean? thank you. You know, You're thank welcome. you for that. <laughs> Being on trails right. going, turn the music down, folks. I don't need to hear that much. <laughs> right. I love it. Oh, that's sort yeah. of cool. So so how many days is this uh, Toledo Jeep Fest? Is it just the one day or is it do you roll in a couple days ahead of time? Is it a whole weekend? So Toledo actually does something a, a little different from a lot of the other events. They actually have a couple of events that go on in June. Okay. And then that, or I'm sorry, July, and that bleed into uh, the first week of August. So mm. they have, they have a few, they call it uh, the Jeep festival, like pre events and pre parties and things like that. So they have the Monroe uh, dealership over there, Jeep dealership, and they've actually got a small off road park. That's really cool because it kind of gives you an idea of what the Jeep is capable oh. of. It's right there the next hills, to the dealership. That's the kind of neat. Yeah. I like that. No, it's awesome. It is. It's a great, you know, for a Jeep dealership to have something like that. That right yes. there will sell that vehicle. Uh, they yes. probably sell more Jeeps than anybody else. Well, and and oh, plus, you want if you what this it, can do right there. Well, yeah, <laughs> and if and if you're brand new and you didn't know if you could do that, now you get this little introduction. Now you're like, hey, I can yeah. do two things on the regular street and off road. Well, I think I'll right. buy the vehicle. I love it. That's yeah, a cool and idea. Most of the ones that they're selling are stock, so it also shows them like right out the gates what a stock Jeep is actually capable. To do yes, very capable, yeah. right? So that's super cool. The Jeep, the uh, Monroe Jeep dealership is always a really good fun event, and a lot of the aftermarket uh, industry guys and gals show up there, put up a booth, or are just there walking around to, you know, be a part of normality, right? They don't have to right. run a booth or whatnot, but they're out there. They want to shake hands. They see some of their parts on some of the car jeeps and vehicles that are out right. there. And they get to walk up and say, hey, yeah, that's us. And, man, you make that look good. We really like the style of your Jeep. We like the logo you put on there. We like the design. We like all the extras that you've done. It's a nice, clean build. And the people are like, holy crap, you work for that? Oh, my gosh. Or you're the owner? And they're like, their minds are blown. Like, wow, these guys are actually here at this, you know, Monroe mm -hmm. Jeep dealership, just shaking yeah. hands and hanging out, having, you know, a nice iced tea with everybody because they got some food vendors and some iced tea vendors sure. that are there. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so it's nice. It's nice to be able to, you know, be a vendor and not have to run your booth, but be out there and socialize with all the people that have helped make your company be what it yeah, is today. It's, it's so important. And I think it makes it, um, I think when you're a Jeep enthusiast and you get to go to an event like that, and then you get to meet somebody from an industry standpoint, it really brings it down to normal, I think. That you realize that, you know what, we're all the same, all of us, whether we exactly. just drive our Jeep or we're manufacturing and making something for the Jeep. We're all the 100%. same. And I think that 
that just is amazing when you get to touch and feel, as I call it, you know, get down to the yeah. grass, the, uh, the grass roots there. Cool. Yes, 100%. Yeah. And then the other thing is, too, that, you know, they all started just like you and me. You know what I mean? Yeah. They all just had a thought and a vision and an image and they decided to do something with it. And here they are today. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing. I just, uh, this industry is amazing. Sometimes when you look at the uh, mass amount of people that are involved doing something for someone to be able to decide to make a change or an uh, upgrade to their Jeep. I love it. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, I got to run around with Nikki G because he's actually a real person. So if anybody was out there, doubting <laughs> if he was real or not. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like Nikki G is real. Yes. We have had sightings of yes. him, I understand. So that's good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I I had one of the sightings. <laughs> Love it, I know. And then we had Chris, we had Larry, we had Duke, we had the mascot with us. He even had I his. I saw uh, Duke. QR, yeah, yeah, he had his I QR saw badge that. on his great. <laughs> I love that on Instagram. I'm like, yes, Duke finally has has arrived. He has his yeah. own QR code. I love it. He did. Perfect. And then so we had perfect. Chip and his wife. Yep. Uh, Cindy, right? Yeah, Cindy. And yeah, uh, nice they people. actually. Yes, and they actually, uh, they ran my vendor booth for me for probably like an hour and a half. Oh. Because me, Chris, Larry, Duke, and Nikki G went over to 93.5 WRQN Radio, and we did, we went live with them. Wow, um, how fun. Yes, no, it was super cool. Oh, man, Chris, he tore it up. He That guy is so good at yeah. just right out the gates explaining everything it is that we have going on between the Jeep Talk Show and chick chat and everything that's up and coming and that they've done in the past and you know all the fun and exciting things that we've done along the way it was so good and it, and it was so impromptu i mean like he, they basically handed him the microphone and it was just he like said, there you go <laughs> and i was like man you would have thought you were reading that off of a teleprompter <laughs> you know yeah I mean? like, exactly so no he's he's such a great ambassador for the jeep talk show and we're so lucky to have him on our team he's, yes He's up there. Of course, everybody else is too. I mean, Larry travels all over to do events for us at, uh, with the Jeep Talk Show. You know, it's just oh, amazing. Awesome. And then, of course, Nikki G, he finally ventured around and did that Hidden Falls <laughs> event with us this year. And now he's doing this fest. I'm like, hey, Nikki G is starting to come out of his shell. I love it. Yeah, well, I think it's because everybody thinks he's fake. So he's like, man, I should probably go out there and show <laughs> everybody that, you know, I'm actually a human. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm actually real. real. Yes. Yeah. And, and according to him, 18% more funnier this year. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like that. I, I wish I could put a percentage of my uh, humor. No, like, exactly. What is how do I gauge no. that? <laughs> that there's, trust me when I tell you there's no way to gauge his humor. I just We, we just say that. It's like he came out in the beginning of the year and so he just promised us 18% funnier. So on the show, we kind of go, uh, was that one? That one was good. That was funnier. This one's not, you know, that kind of deal. So he has, if you guys haven't heard it on the Jeep Talk Show on our episodes, Nikki G always does jokes and funny stuff. It is hilarious. That just always cracks me up. So how fun That's to meet awesome. him though. I have, I have yet to do that. I need to meet him. Yeah. I had to push him into it. So I had set up Chris's phone. We got, I had picked up a tripod and this microphone, you connect it to the iPhone and I set yes. this awesome tripod up and. I had pushed him. I was like, go, go in there. Cause like, you know, Chris was introducing Nikki G. We actually have Nikki G here. And so, and he's just standing there and he looks at me. I'm like, get in the camera. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, Step like, in. So we know you're real. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, Cause we're going to put that on the Jeep talk show later. You know, yeah. you get on there. Love it was it. good. Um, and so, then, uh, yeah. I was going to say, was there one, um, build or something that stood out in your mind i mean i know looking at a parade of nothing but jeeps of all different eras all different builds there had to be something but something stand out that you just like i can't believe i got to see this uh you know it was actually my favorite thing that they because you know i've got kids and whatnot so i yeah. still have one little man he, he's turning 13 next month and i brought him with me and they actually i love when they put together like a place for the kids so the Toledo mm. Jeep Fest does a really good job at, at sectioning off an entire children's area. And they had like pedaled um, Jeeps. And then they also had the battery powered ones out there. And they had a whole Wait, area for the kids. I want to go do that. That sounds like so much fun. Well, I love they, it. The guy was like, do you want to go too? And I'm like, no, I'm good. <laughs> like, just because I'm 411, well, people say, listen, man, yeah. don't underestimate the height <laughs> of the age. Let me take the sunglasses off. You'll be able to. Like, <laughs> oh, I love it. Trust oh, me my on gosh. the mom. <laughs> but that's so great, though. So it's truly a family-oriented event, too. It sounds like it. I mean, they just encourage oh. you to bring your families. 
Toledo is so family oriented. It's amazing. There are so oh. many children, and and they are all the kids have so. You, you go to some of these Jeep events and the kids are just like, oh my God, I'm so done. Can we go? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're bored. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. nothing to do. Right. But no, Toledo Jeep Fest, the kids are lively. They're coming up. They're asking you questions. Um, I had, I probably sold probably 30 hats to children today or wow. yesterday and, and Saturday. Um, the girl, the little girls and whatnot there, the one little boy, I gave him one of the Jeep talk show hats. He was like, I really like that. He's like, that's a microphone on there, mom. I was like, it is buddy. I'm like, you got that. I'm you like, never you know. Have. Future. <laughs> yeah. There's, a, there's a future podcaster right there. <laughs> right, exactly. Love but the it. little girls were so cute. Mom, I, want, I like that tie dye hat. And she was like, okay. She it down. <laughs> I sold a lot. All of my extra small shirts gone. Every single one wow, of them. Like, all so the uh, parents were buying the little girls the extra small shirts from Wrangle Her. So it was great. Yeah. So that's good for you to know for future. Uh, I'm sure you're going to go next year to have more of those kids sizes for them. Yeah. Yeah. If anybody has t-shirt apparel companies down there, I would definitely say bring more kid sizes. There's, I mean, you have. I carry everything from extra small all the way up to a 4X. Yeah. Um, because the whole world has every shape size. I oh, mean, like every size. Just, yep. Yeah. So there's, you really do need to cater for that. And I really hate it when these clothing companies are like, oh, $4 more for an extra small and $5 more for a three, so 2X, 3X. I ridiculous. don't do that. Yeah. It's, it's the same price across the board. I don't care what size you wear. <laughs> That's <laughs> it's totally so cool. To me. All right. So I, <laughs> yeah. I want to ask, because usually at these sort of festivals, fairs, anything like these kind of events, there's always good food. So was there something there that you just say, next time you go, you guys have to eat this? Because Toledo's got to be famous for something too, right? You know, I was, uh, I just kept going to the corner bar. They had like this really <laughs> amazing, like chicken Caesar, blackened chicken Caesar salad. I think I got well, it. There you go. Days. I couldn't See? turn it down. It was so good. And the, the blackened yeah. seasoning was the best. And it was literally, it's two doors down from the convention center, I'd have to look oh, up the name of it. Perfect. But God, it was yeah. right next to it. And they were open the perfect. entire time. They were lucky to have, I bet they're happy every every uh, Toledo Jeep Fest that they own that bar because they probably make more money on those two days than they make half of the year because that place was lined out the door. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I just, I love when I go to fairs or festivals or any of the events like this and I'm always looking for the food. You know, it's, is there a food truck? And food trucks today have really turned out to be gourmet food. I mean, it used to be the old yeah. days, you didn't necessarily want to eat out of a food truck. But today, and probably the last several years, it has really blossomed. And to try new foods or regional things that are from an area that you get to visit, that's always my favorite. And desserts, oh boy, I'm always in trouble when there's desserts around. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I always want to try like it all. A, yeah, I'm a creme brulee kid. So I used to mm. get it to go when I lived in Key West. And they always felt bad because they would give it to me in the metal tin. And they'd be like, we, we really want to give it to you in the carafe, you know. And I'm like, I don't even care. It tastes so good. I don't care what it looks like. It's totally irrelevant. I'm exactly. Like, just let me <laughs> have it. It tastes good. <laughs> like, just put the raspberry on top. We're good. <laughs> so um, because, but, I've, because I've never been to that event, is it held about the same time of the year, the end of July? Like you said, it kind of rolls into the beginning of August. Is it about the same time every year? Yep, every year, about the same time every year. Yep, and then Saturday is, so Friday is the Monroe event, and then after that they have um, the Glass City does like a car crush pre-party downtown, and then Saturday is all the vendor show, and Sunday until 3, three o'clock, I think it was today, uh, the vendor show. We got rained out a little bit, but everybody kind of held out like heroes, because we'd have the rain cloud come over and give us a few sprinkles and it would go away. And then we'd nice. have clear <laughs> skies and it'd warm back up. And then we'd get the n nice breeze come back. It was fine by me. I didn't mind it at all because when you're outside working, <laughs> yeah. vendor booth, sometimes it'll just beat on you. That sun. Yes. So oh my to gosh. They have a little sun. rain. Yeah. And I, and we didn't have as many people on today as we had Saturday, but I think that's because everybody kind of thought to themselves and was looking at the weather and like, oh, God, it's oh. going to rain Sunday. And yeah. that does happen. So that's not a direct reflection on the shows ever. I don't feel, at least not in my eyes, because people do pay attention today. They really don't want it. Not everybody will, you know, some people think that they're made of too much sugar and they might melt. Mm -hmm. Others are like, I don't even care. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, they'll just like bring I had umbrellas. Just it's going to make mud. I want to go run in it, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like rain, bring it on. I want some more mud. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Well, that's cool. So that's something you can plan. You're listening now and you missed it. 
plan to go next year. I'm sure the Deep Talk show is going to be represented again. And Wrangler Hers will also be there, right? Julianne, you plan to be there every year? Every year. It's been six years so far. I've been there every year. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I don't miss it. Not that one. I, I practically sold out this year. That is how busy I am. And even our... Uh, Chris and his wife, they were like, oh, my God, you were so busy. <laughs> they didn't even, I was like, man, I've been gone an hour and a half. They were like, oh, it feels like five minutes. We haven't stopped. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And they're like, no, you're good. I was like, oh, I love you guys. You're the best. Thank you for helping me. Well, and that's what you need sometimes because you can't be everywhere. And part of being in a booth is you got to stay there because that one customer comes up and has questions. You want to be there to talk with them. You want to share right. what you're doing. So, yeah, I understand shows like that. It's uh, it's exciting. It's fun to meet new people, but you have to be there. It is an all day commitment. And it's like just yeah, run to the bathroom. You're like, can somebody watch this, please? And then if you're selling <laughs> yeah. things, you don't want to miss the sale. So you need someone to help out. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And luckily, this is the first uh, vendor event that my 21 year old daughter was able to attend. So it was really nice to introduce her to a lot of the people because they oh. everybody has heard me talk about her, but they have right. not been able to meet her. My so son she's comes with me everywhere. Yeah, so but she's real care. as well, just like Nikki G. She's real. I love it. She <laughs> yeah, actually she exists. Legs. <laughs> yeah, they, so she had a good time. I feel like uh, I was like, so how? I'm like, how was the show for you? She's like, Mom, I am so exhausted. How many people could you possibly know? I was like, I'm really sorry, honey. I'm like, yeah. this is what happens when you don't come with me for six years. Yeah. <laughs> You meet them all well, in one day. <laughs> and I, th I think uh, even listeners listening don't understand how grueling that is because it's not that you sit behind a desk and you sort of smile and wave and take their money. You get up and you talk and you interact and you, you engage. And sometimes it's people from the industry that you've been trying to reach out to or that you haven't seen in a while. Sometimes yeah. it's new, new people that you're you know, getting introduced to. And it is probably one of the most... Um, not grueling, that, that would be like a negative word. I would say very um, energetic. And so you use yeah. a lot of energy and you get done. You're like, why am I tired? All I did was talk today. Well, yeah, because you talked all day today. So trade right. shows, events like this, man, it is, it's like the best rewarding work, but boy, are you exhausted when you get done every day. It's <laughs> yeah. like, whoa. Yeah. And then, and then you get up and do it all again and you have a big huge smile on your face and you're like, I love this job. <laughs> 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 right. Well, what a lot of people don't know about Wrangle Her is that, so I actually do real estate for a living. That's what pays my bills. And then I, uh, for Wrangle Her, I pull all the money back into it. So I really, I don't use any of the money for anything other than getting me from point A to point B to be able to be a part of these events so that I can run a lot of the off-road instructionals that I do across the country and put together the Easter Jeep Safari, the, um, ladies EJS run. I've been running that for the last five years, minus COVID. And then, um, which was the only downtime, unfortunately. But uh, so all of the money goes right back into the business and it goes right back into purchasing new and, and nicer merchandise, um, better quality, cool, fun fashions and and covering a lot of like park passes. And if a girl forgets a flag, I buy her one. I don't care. You know, like I mean, right, I've got a exactly. budget, I've got a ceiling. And if I reach it, then obviously I can't do too much. But yeah, um, we do pretty much use all the money and put it right back into the business. That's and great. then this year we launched a Tread Lightly t-shirt, which we have done very, very well with. And on the front, it says girls can do anything and wrangle her. And on the back, it says treat the trails like you treat yourself and tread lightly. And so 50% of the proceeds go to Tread Lightly for that t-shirt to help them keep going. And it's our small contribution, our small way of being a part of helping others around the country to keep our trails open and do yes. a lot of the trail cleanups and, and help gather people and show how important it is to, you know, treat our trails with respect, bring your garbage with you, mm -hmm. <laughs> things like that. Pack, you know, yeah, pack it in, pack it out. That's <laughs> yeah. right. Oh my gosh, please stay on the trails. <laughs> I'm right. always advocating that, you know, because that's where trails get shut down. And yeah. all it takes is one mm -hmm. person to mow down a fence or go off off the trail. And then somebody else comes along and thinks, oh, somebody else has already been here. I must be able to take this trail as well. Before you know it, yep. you've got all this trampling happening and species mm -hmm. of plants that can be destroyed or whatever it is. It could just be, you know, an issue. So we, we deal with that a lot here in Big Bear. Um, people just not respecting fences not respecting the trails and part of it's because they get on a trail where they're not really set up or capable whether it's their vehicle or themselves and then they rather than turning around 
having pride in themselves saying, hey, I'm not ready to do this any further. They just try to break down fences and barriers and go around it because they just want to keep up with their buddies. So I am a big proponent of Tread Lightly. We're huge proponents, Trails 411, of you got to pack it in, pack it out. So I, I love yep. that you're doing that. I'm happy to hear that the shirt is actually contributing. That's a great idea. So I love yep. that. Yeah, we'll have to do one for uh, your 411, and I can't wait to start talking about that and get everybody acclimated with what it is that you have going on, because God knows that you have seriously invested in everything that you're doing in the off-road world and sector, especially as a woman going out there and breaking barriers and, you know, going totally against stereotypical, you know, females <laughs> of what yes. the world sees us as, and, uh, it, and you started later in life yep. with that and you're as you know good at it as you are today because you have just consistently challenged yourself and gone against the thread <laughs> you know like okay you say i can't do that i'm gonna try to do that yeah <laughs> you know? i'm gonna try it anyway or, yeah, or exactly. being pushed into it hey i think you should try this really yeah i should okay darn it <laughs> here i am <laughs> yes i'm doing it <laughs> it's always nice to have good friends around who push you gently when you need to be pushed sometimes exactly um, so I did want to mention, I ran into, so with the industry, like you were saying, it's really hard to be able to walk around, get away from our vendor booth, which is fine yeah. because we're there for all the people that come to attend the event. I mean, obviously we pay for our spaces. We we schedule in and pencil in the time so that we're there because we want to celebrate them and, and we're trying to be just a positive addition to what it is that they're, they're doing in their Jeeps, on the trails, outside of their work hours when they have mm -hmm. their free time. And they go try to take that next adventure and jump on that trail ride with their friends, family, husband, or whomever it may be. But I, thanks to <laughs> our friends with the Deep Jeep Talk Show, the teammates, uh, helping me out with my booth, I was able to run into a few of my friends there. It was so nice to see, like, Allison Parliament was there from Duck Duck, Duck the Duck Duck Jeep Girl. Yes. I yeah. love seeing her. She's so positive. Everything she that she did. She always is. And her whole story is just very I know. heartfelt based. It's all yes. good. It's such a good mission that she went on and it turned into something so great. And, and I love the ducks. It's such a nice, easy way to compliment somebody's vehicle without, without them being by their vehicle. It's a way of saying, Hey, nice job. This looks great. Right. We love you. This looks you good. know, it, yep. yeah. And you come back and that person comes back to their Jeep and they see these ducks on there and they got the cars. And they, and they know smile they get on their from. faces. I know. Exactly. I love it. So thank you so much, Allison. I, I have not been able to really express as much because we always get to talk and like where are you going next what are you doing next where can i see you next you know like we're always like yeah that. or where were well, you just at so we're always curious about what each other have been have had going on so i just want to say thanks to allison um it was nice to see you again and then i got to run into ari i don't know if you have uh seen ari but she's with the rockstar garage and she's also uh she was working the mickey thompson booth there but her and her boyfriend those guys are amazing. They're such a great team and they've been yes. such a positive inspiration, kind of like you and your husband. Mm -hmm. You know, those, those two have traveled. They've, they've done so many different crazy trail rides on, and really pushed their Jeeps to the ultimate limits. And I met Ari well before her Jeep was e e ever even looked like that. When it was a baby, before she even okay. put big tires it was on like, it. It was everything. like a stock baby. <laughs> Yeah, and she was out there testing the limits on what a stock Jeep could do. I mean, she I had no fear. I mean, she looked at it and she said, okay, you know what? I'm going to give it a try. I, she was going over up in Michigan. We have these uh, sewer barrels. And uh, she had just done her lift. And I ran it. I, we would always run into each other up in like St. Helen, exit okay. 222 in Mi Michigan. And I was like, Ari's here. And I go over there and I was taking some pictures over. I'm like, do it. You got this. I'm like, nice <laughs> stuff. Like, just crawl that. You're in a good spot. Like, oh, yeah. And I'm over in the background talking to myself because I want to screw up her and her spotter. And I'm like, she's got it. She's got it. Yes, she did it. Yes. You know, like, but she's always been super positive. So it was great to see Ari. I snuck up on her at the VIP party. Me and Chris went. And uh, we also got to see... Uh, um, Jeremy Rowe and meet the whole band. It was awesome to meet them in person, shake their hands. I got to hear the Jeep Girl song. It I love so it. Good. I know. That's been I, fun. I, yeah, I've been hearing that that's yeah. um, making its rounds on Facebook right now, too. Uh, you know they're, what? His they're getting lyrics, it out there. He's got a lot of really good off road songs. I was listening, yeah. and I'm a lyrical person, so music has to tell a story for me. I mean, like, I love all music, but I really like the ones that tell a story. And his music was so awesome he had the the second 
second to the last song, I think it was, that he sang, did for the set for the night. And it was about how he didn't care what you what off-road vehicle you came in. If you're off-roading, you have your family. Right. And I was like, I love that. I'm like, that is the best line. I looked at Chris. I like whacked him in his arm. I'm like, did you just hear what he said? <laughs> like, Chris is like, it. I heard it. I'm standing right here. I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, can, isn't it, though? I mean, it doesn't matter yeah. what trail we're on. If anybody came up and said, hey, can I join you? We're not going to look at them and go, oh, well, hmm. I mean, it depends on what they're set up, if they could do the trail. But mm -hmm. you're off-roading. You are you are part of family. It's who we are as a community. You know, yep. yes, we talk a lot about Jeeps and we do a lot with that. But we, we cross over into all kinds of vehicles when it gets to off-roading. And there is that camaraderie of having somebody that you know is doing something out, enjoying the outdoors, having fun. Yeah. 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 So I want to dig into you, Wendy, because so the, the Toledo Jeep Fest was a huge hit. It was it was as successful this year as it's been any other year. I honestly feel like Saturday there was probably as many attendees this Saturday, this past Saturday than there was the last two years between Saturday and Sunday. We were so wow. love it that I I had probably 10 to 12 people in my booth at a time all day long wow <laughs> i was never empty wow. <laughs> I, had, I had conversations going in so many different yes, directions of I course like, oh i know that <laughs> i know that feeling you're trying to like have three conversations at one time you're trying to yes. fill out a sale sell a shirt sell a hat do it all yes i've been there girl it's like you yes. need multiple hands like an octopus i can do this <laughs> i can juggle so. yes well there was, there was an though. event yeah, there was an event we did this weekend, um, not as big as Toledo Jeep Fest. Um, this is was for, it's called Pier 4x4, and they had base camp out here in Big Bear. And they're a Northern California group that does all kinds of overlanding. Um, so we saw lots of Toyotas, um, Subarus, different vehicles. There were XJs, definitely some Jeeps, definitely Gladiators. Um, basically, it's like a big festival that's for overlanders. So they come in on Thursday they're there through Sunday. Um, they do a huge event. There's probably about 400 campers, maybe 400 wow. people. I don't know if that's 400 vehicles, but it was definitely about, there's probably about 300 vehicles parked. They're parked everywhere. It's in Holcomb <laughs> Valley, if you're familiar with this area. And what that means is that it's just this big, huge open forest, if you will. And right. so we are, um, we actually were invited. Uh, Trails 411 goes. We have a little booth that we set up. Um, and we do actually a recovery class. So people come and they, we teach them uh, about recovery. And well, first off, we'd love to teach you how not to get stuck in the first place. Right. But right. <laughs> talking about equipment and what happens is most people, um, when they are um, thinking about recovery, the first thing someone does is I got to buy a winch. Well, if you've heard me on the show, that is really the lit last thing that we go to. There's a whole process of recovery. Anyway, long story short, you can listen to the show and I'll tell you more about recovery. But the, the, <laughs> nice, the, the nice thing about it is that we actually go through all the equipment. They get to touch and feel. They get to try, you know, what, what is a soft shackle? How does it work? Here's a D-ring. You know, here's what a strap mm -hmm. feels like. Here's what a bubble rope or a, a flexible rope do, you know. And yeah. then we actually get them into the, into the winch line. Um, being certified myself for winch safety I'm very much a stickler on safety things. So having them actually sure. touch and feel using the mechanics of it, hooking things up, it just gives everybody a real life feel. So we do yes. this event and to be able to show people, listen, even if you have a basic vehicle, not a Jeep, but any kind of an off-road vehicle, you still need to understand about recovery and when to do it and when not to and what equipment to use. So, but yep. the actual event, Pier 4x4, they are amazing. They do this whole kid's genre as well they have a whole section where you camp if you want it quiet for kids and then of course you have the party section um oh, they're cool. up all night they are <laughs> doing like a scavenger hunt for the kids they had obviously raffles with oh, so many things to raffle off for equipment it's like a regular event you know we're talking big things like winches and straps and you name it kind of stuff so right. that's going on at the same time but they had something unique this time we didn't we weren't there but we heard about it um, cause we don't stay the, we don't stay through the night cause we live in big bear. I don't have to camp out there, although that'd be kind of fun, yeah. <laughs> but they do, they, they had what was called a silent disco. So they had what? a DJ. Oh, I know playing, what you're talking about. That's yes. So exciting. They're playing disco music. You logged into the app. They gave out headphones. Yeah. So it was, it was 11 o'clock at night that they did this. 
and everybody could dance to the disco, whatever they wanted to do, but it was silent, <laughs> which I think yeah. sounds so totally cool. So anyway, it's a lot of fun. It's uh, It was good. We got to meet a lot of people. Um, Trails 411, what we do is we take you to the next level of your driving ability. So if you're a new driver or you're new to off-roading, we will set up a course based on your experience level and we take you to that next level. We teach you everything that your vehicle can do. So that's right. from learning about four low, four high, when to put it in, when not to, um, two footing, if that's necessary, we're going to teach that. We're going to teach you how to spot a little bit, how to pick a line, how to actually feel what your vehicle does. So that's kind yeah. of what Trails 4-1 does. We also do a recovery class um, specifically where we do teach, take you out, we get you stuck, teach you how to unstick yourself, <laughs> as I call it. Um, <laughs> and then we also do an advanced class as well. So um, which is nice because we could take you through like John Bull, Holcomb Valley, um, those are Holcomb Creek, some of those black diamond trails that are really difficult and people want to try them, but they're not sure what to do. So that's what Trails sure. 411 does. So in that's the booth awesome. that we set up, we just talk to people about that. We have paper maps. Um, paper maps are important. As Tony learned on one of our shows that he needed it in Moab and didn't have a paper map. Sorry, Tony. <laughs> can't. And he can't say anything because he's not on the show right now. I love it. Anyway, but we, we have maps of about 600 miles of our trails out here, Big Bear. So when people come, they, you know, sometimes equipment can fail. GPS doesn't tell you where to go or it tells you yeah. the wrong place to go or your batteries <laughs> die, you know, something like that. So Which we I just think had, happened to Tony in Moab. I think that did. the GPS That's, took him the wrong way. <laughs> it did. And, oh, there it goes. <laughs> so he is listening, but he can't say anything. I love it. This is great. I love the show. <laughs> anyway, uh, but that's what we do in our booth is that we're not selling anything per se. We're certainly we're trying to get students, but we're more about trying to help them understand, talk about trail, you know, try to tread lightly, being careful on the trails, what to do, not to do, where to go, where to drive, you know, that kind of stuff. So sure. it's a fun event. Everybody is super, super nice, as you know that from events like this. Um, oh, yeah. But it's it's a different crowd. You know, it's a really different <laughs> crowd because they're all overlanding. Right. They're all camping. And they're sure. enjoying the beautiful nature that Big Bear has. So, yeah, we had a great time. Good good weekend. Um, not awesome. as many people. We didn't have a parade, darn it, like you guys did in, <laughs> in Toledo. But that's but, okay. Uh, you know, a camp, yeah. I mean, it's like a give or take. You know, you either can hang out under the stars all night long and breathe in some fresh air and hang out with Mother Nature and a bunch of great people. Or you can go and to the other side of the country and closer to the other coast. And you yeah. can hang out in a parade with a bunch of vendors walking on pavement in downtown area. I mean, exactly. it's, it's just a different vibe, but that's the best part about all of these shows and all the people that are embedding in all these different departments is that you, you do have the best of every single world you could possibly imagine doing. You could go to the beach and ride your Jeep down the sand. I mean, if you go to Florida, Daytona, they do it every year. Or you can go to Toledo and you can hang out downtown to one of the biggest parades I've ever been in. Or you can go hang out in California with you and your team. Yeah, and you exactly. can sit under the stars and start That's right. And you, you, silent you can discos. camp. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I know. Crazy stuff. <laughs> well, and, you know, that's something we get from people, too, is like, hey, I'm brand new to this world of off-roading. Where do I start? And I always yeah. tell people, look, if you can get on Facebook... And you just type in Jeep events or off-roading events or 4x4 yes. events. Or just trail, Trails 411. She can tell you yep. everything. Wendy's well, got it. She knows, that's true, If you too. want to know anything that's going on in California, you call Wendy. But yeah. real quick, so where can they sign up for some of the things it is that you do? How do they get in touch with you? How do they become a part of what you have going on? So we have an excellent website. Uh, you can do it on Trails 411 or Jeep 4x4 School. Um, we've had that domain okay. forever. Don Alexander has been, you know, in the industry for so many years, written so many books. We have a new book coming out as well. I'm going to be talking about that on the Jeep Talk Show. Oh, but that's uh, awesome. between myself, uh, my husband, and Don Alexander, we have about 140 years worth of experience. Wow. So we're, we're oh talking God. everything from racing to go karts to desert to slow horseback crawling, riding. To horseback riding, yeah, you <laughs> uh, up to publishing. And of course, I'm on, you know, the Jeep talk show, which I think is awesome being on a podcast and being able to yeah. just, you know, tell people out. But we have such diverse information and knowledge to pass on to people. But yes, Trails 411, go to our website. There's a uh, click for more information. You fill out some basic stuff. We respond pretty quickly. Um, like, you know, if you listen to the show a couple weeks back, I had somebody from Maryland reach out to us who wanted to um, do a run. And then we also had somebody from Tucson, Arizona reach out and wanted to do the, the the different trails. So we're available to help on that too, from the Jeep Talk Show, of course, but that's something that sure. we do. But yep. 
And then you're also on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook under Trails411, correct? Yes. And then I have my own personal Wendy Stevens Facebook. Um, But Instagram, it's uh, G Parley Tactical that we do, my husband and I. Um, And then there's Trails411 as well. I know we're all messed up. We got a bunch of these little handles. It's kind of hard to keep track of everything. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, just make it easy one day. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) I know, right? Well, because you know what? When it first came out, we made something, right? Because everybody made something. And right. then all of a sudden we formulated these companies and these businesses. And so now we made something else. <laughs> That's know? right. So like, I know. Every time we turn around, we, I'm like, how do I delete the first one? I've got one that I don't even <laughs> use. I don't even know how to get rid of it. <laughs> I know. Well, and it's hard too, because it's like we, we create content, but then you don't have time to get it posted half the time because we're still <laughs> out doing things. And of course I still have a full-time job and my husband works part-time. It's like all this stuff we're doing. It's like, Wow. I mean, I respect people who are posting every other day or posting at least twice a week. And I said to Bill, we really need to be posting a little bit more. So I've got some fun stuff I'm going to be posting here pretty soon. Some things I ventured on brand new that I'm doing. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. So when did you guys start Trails 411? Um, We met Dawn about six years ago, maybe five years ago. And we started helping him with events. He was doing tire events. Um, we did the next entire event is how we really started working with him. And I sort of have a natural ability to teach. And um, Bill does really well. He has such knowledge and, and just amazing. I somehow picked up spotting very quickly. And I'm, according to Don and Bill, very good at it. So <laughs> that's sort of my forte. Um, and so then all of a sudden it just happened. That's how I met Tony, um, was one of the next entire events. And so oh, we started, we started working with Don and then Tony, he says like, can you come on and do an interview? And I'm like, you mean my husband, right? Cause he has all the knowledge. I don't know anything. He's like, no, no, no. We want to talk to you. And then next oh, thing wow. I know, he's like, do you want to come on the Jeep talk show? And I'm like, you mean my husband, right? Cause he has all the knowledge. He's like, no, we want you. And I said, okay. So that's how it got started. And I, you know, I've, it's hard because I've been in sales uh, probably 30 years of my life. When you sure. talk to somebody face to face, you can get an instant read. You can hear, feel, see them, right? When yeah. you're on like a podcast, there, there's no visual. It right. took me some time to get used to what that feeling was like. Doing a podcast is not easy. It's easy and simple when you think about it. But there's so much that Tony and Josh were doing in the background and getting it all ready. I just had to show right. up. So then yeah. I decided, you know, why don't I do something called Newbie Nuggets? And Newbie Nuggets was really taking that person from the passenger seat and putting them in the driver's seat for the first time. And what did that mean? So I talk about everything from the very, very basic newbie background. So what's interesting, I've been on, I think almost three years now with Tony and I've learned so much, um, (laughs) you know, just they, they have knowledge and then my own experiences as well, as you know, is the more we do, the more we learn. Um, and the next thing you know, I'm, you know, now I'm on doing a chat, a chat with you. (laughs) So there you go. Right. Here we are. You never know. Exactly. (laughs) I mean, I well, no, I you had, had more time. <laughs> you know what? I never would have in a million years if somebody said to me seven or eight years ago, you guys are going to buy a Jeep. And oh, by the way, you're going to love going off roading. I didn't even know what that meant. And number two, <laughs> you're, you're going to be good at it. You're going to now teach people how to do it. And oh, mm-hmm. wait, we're going to put you on this podcast and you're going to help <laughs> teach more people. I would have said you're out of your mind. So I say to anybody listening, you just never know what door is opening. And you just have to step through it. Yeah. Take a step, yep. take a chance, yep. try it. Honestly, yep. if I, you know, if Tony had not come out for that event, I don't know that he and I would have met. I don't know that we would have. We might have. Who knows? But the right. bottom line is you do not know who you're going to meet in this industry, who you're going to meet in life, who, how your life's going to turn out, what's going to happen. You just have to keep going through it and grow through it. And that's kind of what we do. So here we are. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And Obviously, it's been very successful because you guys have held many, many, many classes. <laughs> yes. And you're constantly at events and you're always busy. And the fact that you can squeeze in a few hours to hang out with me and the Jeep mm. Talk Show and we do all it is that we do all the time. It's well, awesome. You're, I mean, but you're the same. You're working sorry. a full time job, too. Yeah. So, you know what it is. You know, you just you know what it is. It's women can prioritize. Right. We can. We can. And we can make it happen. So that's what we're doing. And I love that we're doing this chick chat because we're going to meet even more amazing women coming forward. I mean, I just can't wait. Yeah, we've got Missy from Oracle. It's going to be coming on here shortly. And then we've got Rosie from Max's Tires. We've been talking with uh, um, Kim Pentagast. 
and we're going to potentially be having her on very soon. So we've got we've got some pretty amazing women that we're going to be talking to and finding out some more information about what got them started, what lit the fire onto them and, and moved them and the ball rolling in the direction that they're going today, what obstacles they faced, how they conquered them, what their next steps are, where we're going to find them in the next month, year, what shows they'll be at, what they're going to bring to uh, SEMA. Or King of the Hammers is coming up. So that's really interesting. Maxis has a really cool Jeep that they have racing that. And I love that Jeep. I've gotten so many videos of that Jeep. I'm yeah, exactly. Just drive it, please. I just yeah. want to drive that Jeep. I just want to drive it. Please, 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 please. Yeah. I'm really good. Trust me. I can drive. I can get myself through stuff. I know. Yes. Oh you know what? That, that's what I say all the time. If Jeep wants to send me the 392, I'll be happy to put it through its paces out here in Big Bear. I've <laughs> right, got some great yeah. black diamonds I want to put it on. I'll tell you, it'll be great. So. Yeah. So, Julianne, what, what event are you going to be at next? Uh, so, we've got the Great Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion that's coming up. I am going to be in the Max's Tires booth with Rosie, and we'll be out there giving away some free swag. And then I believe that they've got a free raffle that's going on, so you'll have to kind of come over to the booth and chat with us to find out what giveaways will be given away. I don't have the fine-tuning exact details, but I do know... At a couple past events, they gave away a full set of tires, and I was super excited to see the people that won those because mm -hmm. they were looking, they were super conflicted on which tires to go with. Oh, boy, yeah. And <laughs> they hung out with us for quite a bit at the Maxis booth, and so when they won the tires, it, I was so happy to see them win the tires because the husband was like, I really like the sidewall tread on these. Honey, we should really try this raffle because I think that these tires would work really well for our team. <laughs> and sure enough, like out of yeah. all the people that came to the booth and filled out the tickets and, and put in for the raffles and that came to us to talk to us about the tires, mm -hmm. those two were the most excited. You can you know feel their energy on That's what the best. difference those tires would do. Yes, yeah. it is. That's it's the so, best when so someone wins like that because, you know, what? we've seen that too. We had a Nexon Tire uh, giveaway event uh, for our club. And nice. uh, it was nice to see the people who won it really, really needed it and really wanted them. Like, it's that's who you want to win stuff like that. I love that. Yeah, you don't want the guy that's like, oh, I'll just take a free pair of tires. What do I care? Yeah. You know, I'll put some I'll new throw shoes them in the on back. the Jeep. No problem. Yeah. Right, cares? exactly. Or yeah. they go home and they sell them. Those yeah. are the guys that I'm like, oh, no. you so should not have won. No, like <laughs> karma. Karma's going to come back and get those guys. That's it. <laughs> yep. Whoever puts those on their tires, <laughs> I'm getting a flat or something. Oh, man. Exactly. I got a flat story to tell you. So it wasn't with these Maxxis tires. I actually had almost 80,000 miles on a pair of my Maxxis tires. Wow. And I was on my way to Moab, Utah, Oops. and my, my new tires yeah. were here. So I was like, all I got to do is just make it to Moab. Just to Moab. And, nope. and, and that's the year that my stupid drag link broke. Well, I was on oh. the freeway, so I ended up uh, sea clamping it and rigging it and, and limping it off of the freeway. Made it to this like really crazy um, off-road company, and it kind of looked like I was pulling into a junk car. Did not look like they were building anything <laughs> super cool. Okay, and, and, then, you're like, and, you're, and then you're like, "Oh, great! I'm a girl. This is going to go one of two ways." <laughs> yeah, and the guy was missing teeth. It was great. Um, it's special. But I was like, uh, <laughs> no, I was like. Can you just help me get the spare off <laughs> so that I can put it in the front? Because I had a, I had a nail that went into the sidewall. And once you get in the sidewall, it's just done. Oh, there's nothing you yeah, can do you're about done. it. You it's can not plug much, anything yeah. out. Yeah. So I was like, God bless America. I'm like, I, you know, they got eighty thousand miles on them, and it just couldn't go on the tread, right? Just because a lot of the nails that go into the tread of the Maxxis tires, they literally will bend. I have pulled a bunch of bent nails, and they don't even get anywhere near puncturing the tire at all, ever. It's crazy. It'll just be the very end of the nail. It's just like mm -hmm. not yeah, even four millimeters. Point. Yeah. But no, that that's – and it was like a household nail. Okay, one that you hung like a picture up with. I was like, oh, you've got to be geez. kidding me. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> I'm not even joking. But I can't take a 130-some pound tire off the back and put the other one back on the ba back spare. No way. I'm 4'11". <laughs> I'm 98 pounds. You know, like I cannot pick that tire up. So yeah, no, you need help. Trust me, it's too much. Yeah. So I go to this place and I'm just like terrified. The guy, like, he had a super strong accent. He was really nice, though. He was so nice. And he grabbed his buddy and they actually used a high lift, two high lift jacks because they couldn't lift the tire either. They had back problems or something. So they put it on these two high lift jacks that they put a strap on and drive down. And I was just looking at them going, somebody's going to get hurt. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know why yeah, they're doing that. Great. I'm like, I, I should have got pictures and video, but I didn't. I was just scared. I was waiting to, you know, I had the phone ready for 911 more than anything. <laughs> I was just waiting for this to turn into a complete disaster. But 
ended up working out. But yeah, so I those, you know, for the road trips and everything it is that I do. But man, those tires are just way too much. I can't I can't swap those out on the side of the road. Um, before this one, I had a tire. Um, I ran it over like a big shard of metal, mm. and it. I just watched the tire pressure go. It was like five pounds per second. It's like. 35 to 30 yeah. to 25 to, to 20 nothing. and i'm going like i'm uh, not even gonna make it off the freeway i know point. i can't even get stopped it's gonna be too much no so i just pulled over i dropped the tire i rolled it off to the side i put the other one on and i called my girlfriend she was only like five miles behind me i was like hey do you got the flatbed like she was flatbedding her her, her jeep and she's like yeah i'm like would you mind picking up my tire on the side of the road here's the mile marker and she did. She grabbed my tire for oh me. Oh, my gosh. I love <laughs> Great it. Great Smoky Mountain. It was great. I was like, I can't believe you guys actually picked my tire up. I'm like, love you're it. the best. Yeah. Do you, have, do you have any stories like that? Like, just crazy. You're trying to get across the country or to an event. You had something happen. And yeah, lo and we, behold, we, here comes the camaraderie. <laughs> yeah. We were in uh, our lifted Chevy Silverado. It's a, a four-door long bed. Doing nice. about 70 miles an hour. And the tire popped. It blew. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> left left front when you're mm. lifted and then you pop a tire like that it completely like shifts the vehicle toward the left it was oh, all yeah. my husband could do to hold on that steering wheel to not flip us roll us do anything the vehicle wanted to move to the left side which is the center lane so we got off there was a guy next to us who saw or heard that explosion or that pop however you want to word it um, and he backed up enough that I thought, my gosh, did we hit him? You know, I'm thinking, cause that, I don't know, I don't know what's happening to the tire. You can't see it from sitting inside. Right. So we got off to the side of the road. Um, we were stopped. It was good. He got out. He's like, are you guys okay? And we're like, are you okay? Cause I'm thinking, great, here comes the insurance. <laughs> you know, we've just nailed this guy's Mercedes or whatever. Now we're going to be, you know, debt, <laughs> debt for life anyway. Right. So, um, that was fine. We did not have a spare because we're running 37s on a lifted Chevy. I mean, who carries a spare? We do carry a spare now, <laughs> by the way. I said to my husband, never again, ever. So what we did is um, we were, gosh, about four hours from home. So, of course, AAA doesn't cover you to get back home. So we about four hours later, a flatbed came, took, picked us up. We got turned around. Um, we were in the truck. So we're lifted truck on a flatbed above that. You can't even see the cab below driving home because they, they didn't let both of us sit in the cab. So we got to sit in the actual vehicle on the back of this thing. You're going to talk about an experience. Holy cow. You're <laughs> lifted up high. You're on this truck. You're high. Anyway, it was weird. You would go right. underneath an overpass and I was ducking. It was oh weird. Because right? <laughs> you're like, are we going to hit? You know? And then I would look over at my husband who'd have his hands off the steering wheel because you, you can't see the, the truck below us. So oh it was God. as if we were driving, but we weren't driving. There was no, oh there was God. no controls. It was the strangest thing. So anyway, a oh friend wow. of ours from Big Bear actually drove two hours, brought us a spare wow. tire. We luckily between Don and, and us, we had extra tires because we're always doing some tire testing and different things. And so it was already mounted and we were able to meet us part way. The tow truck driver actually assisted us. We didn't necessarily need the help, but he helped us change the tire. It was done and we were on our way. It was like, what the heck just happened? So. Nice. Yeah, I've had a really, that was probably the scariest experience only because of what could have happened. If sure. I was driving, which I drive a lot, would I have been able to hang onto that steering wheel and not let it flip its, you know, ourselves to the left because of the weight of the vehicle and just, you know, having that tire blow. And it was yep. a complete came off the bead in a very strange way. There was basically a tire failure and it was a brand wow. new tire, brand new oh, tire. Man. So that but was you weird, never yeah. know. So there's some companies, you know, like they switch a manufacturer or they have somebody else that produces mm -hmm. it for you, for them. Yep. And you never they know. don't, the quality control may not always be to the same specs that they were or, and yeah. they find out unfortunately that way at yeah. times. So, you know, it's not always like the harm or the foul of the company. And you always no. hope for a situation like yours to where it is recoverable and nobody got hurt because you right. don't ever want it. And nobody ever wants anything no. so bad, right? They don't no. make products. For them oh. to go bad. They make products so that you can go out there and you can do everything it is that you want to do with your vehicle. And here's what they've done to make it so that it's capable, right? Yep. So they 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 have no, there's no harm, no foul. And so like moments like that happen all the time. And I think a lot of people are super quick to be like, oh, this company and that company. And yeah. it's not always that company. Sometimes no, it is. Un yeah, sometimes it's the third person that had their hands on it or it made it through quality control and it shouldn't have. You know, yeah. like it's, it, 
And that happens in life. I mean, it happens with makeup. It happens with hairbrushes. It happens. That's why we have TJ Maxx in Burlington, right? Because aren't those all the shirts that miss like one stitch or something? And so yeah, or a for button. some reason, yeah, they can't sell at full price. So it's like, you know, like it's all out there. <laughs> yeah, it's all there. So, yeah, well, exactly. you know what? I just wanted to say that I really enjoyed our chat this time. Um, yeah, I'm I'm kind of surprised because I'm like, can we fill it? You know, let's go ahead and have some fun. Yeah. Let's talk about us. You know, you just came back from the yeah. Toledo Jeep Fest. So it was great. But I really enjoyed uh, chatting with you. And I look forward to the next time when we talk to another amazing lady in this industry. So yeah, but it's so, good. Everybody kind of needs to know a little bit about who you are, where you're from, yeah. what you've done, where you came from, how long Same you've been you. doing it. Exactly. Yeah. And it's good because now everybody gets to get a little handle on um what we've got going on. I mean, I've also got the Detroit Four Fest that's coming up. We do the all-female driver event. We're first to hit the trail before the park opens. It's free through Wrangle Her. Uh, you sign up on our Facebook a couple weeks before the event. We'll throw it up there. But um, what's your next events? Because I had I had talked about Great Smoky and now Detroit Four Fest, but you got another event coming up, don't you? Uh, we're not sure. We've got a couple things on the horizon. I'm not, I don't have anything nailed down yet, um, which we'll post if we do stuff, but um, okay. We we have other runs and stuff that we're going to be doing, but nothing, no major event that I'm aware of, like you know, overlanding or four by four or any kind of special thing. They're they're not a lot of them out here. It's kind of crazy. They should. Big Bear is yeah. a great place to come and do it. I don't know why they don't do it. So yeah, it's so pretty over there. I still have to make it out there. But we we were talking to Teresa last mm -hmm. week or You're gonna have two to. weeks ago. Yeah, and we got to work out something. I'll fly in and sit passenger or jump in with somebody. Yep. And uh, we yep. got to go have fun out there for sure. It would be a good time to get all of us together. Yep, um, I agree. But other than that, uh, you know, the night is still young. And tomorrow's Monday. Everybody gets to go to work, thank God, right? Because we need our paychecks, unfortunately. As much <laughs> as none of us ever want to go to work, we really do like being able to pay our bills and buy cheap yes, parts. <laughs> yes, that's so, what we do. But, yeah, just, in order yeah. to do that. <laughs> hey, it's it's called Jeep for a reason. Justified expense every payday. So there you go. <laughs> that one is the best. Or it is. I like the just empty every pocket. Pocket, um, I know. Justified <laughs> expense every paycheck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> it's even better when nobody argues with you. All right, honey, you want to spend right. twenty five hundred on your suspension? Fine, whatever. I guess it's been three years. You can go ahead and upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Right. Awesome. So then next time we've got some uh, amazing chicks that we're going to be interviewing. So you guys are just going to have to tune in. You'll have to go on to jeeptalkshow.com and check out some of the Jeep Talk Show interviews. And then also for the Chick Chat interviews, they are on the jeeptalkshow.com website. And if you go through some of the episodes right on the main page, it's got episode 845, the biggest tire without the lift is on there that was the most recent post that they did and if you scroll through you'll see that there are some episodes that have a cc in the explanation and it's got a circle in the bottom right corner that says chick chat under the gym with the jeep talk show together because we are we're together and what we're doing is we're empowering everybody in the industry and we're also interviewing everybody that we possibly can and then we've the jeep talk show also has open-ended episodes to where you can call in and you could be a part of them there's questions and answers if you have a question about one of the guests that they're going to be interviewing and you want to learn more about it you can do that on the jeep talk show we will start doing that on chick chat we're not going to do it right now we've got some amazing women that we want to we want to hear some more about what's going on in their lives where they've been where they're going what companies that they're with how they got started how they started their own company what part of the off-road industry that they are a part of um where their passions are where you can find them meet them join them and, all of uh, it. <laughs> all of the above. Check, check, check. <laughs> yeah, check, check, chick, chat, chick, chat, yeah. chick, chat. <laughs> well, and, um, and I just want to say, make sure you guys connect with us on social media. We actually have our own hashtag now. So it's hashtag yes. J JTS Chick Chat. So yes. we'd love for you to share your own off-road adventures, your favorite trails, stylish moments. And listen, if you've got somebody in mind that you think we need to talk with and you want us to get their information out, that is great. You can find all of our episodes at jeeptalkshow.com. We're also on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. We'd love yeah. to hear from you, so please reach out to us. Well, we've hoped that you've all been inspired by our stories, our insights, and some tips that we've shared. Incredible guests, Miss Wendy, 
And, Same uh, to you, Julianne. <laughs> we get to introduce each other. I love it. <laughs> I know. I thought for a second, I'm like, should I say myself? I'm like, I shouldn't say myself. No, <laughs> I'll say it for you. I'll say it for you. Julianne. <laughs> there you go. And just always remember, there's no limits to what you can achieve when you embrace your passion and fearlessly chase your dream. Broadcasting since 2010. 